maybe we spend the last 10 minutes highlighting some of your work which you're currently doing because we've apart from authoritarianism and a little bit of uh bagging on gut microbiome we've usually just used examples <laughs> so m could you talk about some of your current work which you think is really interesting uh yeah i'll let you choose yeah. what you'd like to talk about sure well i mean um to yeah i'll, I'll talk about the um, gut microbiome thing and start there but one, one study we did actually was looking at um we did this cool study with tamlin connor from otago university she's a, a nutrition research psychology researcher health psychologist um is a better way to put it um and uh we got a whole bunch of blood tests from about a thousand people and we were able to look at the inflammation and we were using inflammation as a proxy of gut microbiome health um which has significant limitations but basically that was stemming off of this idea of the the leaky gut hypothesis the idea that um your gut permeability changes when the microbiomes um are not uh in the correct balance when the microbiome is not in the correct balance and therefore you get these pro-inflammatory things uh leaking through your gut and causing um, and, and manifesting and changes in your bloodstream and also getting up to the brain and causing you to feel more 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 crap because you uh have this systemic inflammation in your body um the thing we found in that research we we did find that there was an association that people with higher levels of inflammation did feel a bit more stink but what we found crazy 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 was people uh women that were taking the oral contraceptive pool had 10 times the amount of inflammation as anything diet related oh people God. could have the worst diet and it would not impact on their um sorry my grandma's just coming in to get her magazine um <laughs> it would not have the same impact uh on your um uh gut microbiome and inflammation as taking the oral contraceptive pill which was that, wild that's insane yeah and um depending on what type of pill it was the brand there was actually differences between the brand and how much inflammation it caused as well um and that was one of the things that that sort of put me off doing gut microbiome research is because i was like well there's of all the different things that could be affecting your mental well-being gut microbiome is pretty far down the list in terms of how readily we can um pose an intervention on it and certainly things like increasing or having a cleaner diet would make you feel better um and often um uh it does make you feel better and that's more of a nutritional argument more so than the actual microbiome argument but i just thought okay well if you sleep better if you um exercise then that is going to increase your well-being thousandfold more so than anything microbiome related so so do i really want to continue down this line of research when there could be when it's such a small effect and that there could be other avenues to explore that could be more um, productive or manifest greater a greater sense of well-being um both in me and in participants <laughs> yeah. um so that was the microbiome thing uh the the microbiome research that i'd done there and that's what pushed me towards um when i went down the route of authoritarianism and we talked about some of the studies that i did there where we did longitudinal studies looking at changes in authoritarianism we did some experimental stuff there and it was when i actually completed my phd um, I realized that um, one of the examiners actually was like, well, couldn't you just explain this with social identity theory? And then I was like, damn, my entire thesis is a lie. <laughs> and I could explain this entire process with social identity theory. And one of the things that I started looking at there um, was um, the social identity approach, like I spoke about with some of those, those smart cookies over in Australia at the moment. And the effects that we were seeing there are amazing um we were finding that things first of all in terms of the negative effect we find that things like loneliness have a similar effect on your well-being as moderate levels of smoking wow. <laughs> it can be just as damaging to your health as, as smoking which is wild um and that's why we sometimes talk about loneliness as a pandemic and then when we look at some of the interventions that are being done that have a social identity focus we see that the social identity approaches that are being used can be comparable to um, cognitive behavior therapy and sometimes even better. So some of the research that we see there shows that 
um, when people um, experience a social identity approach or groups for health versus cognitive behavior therapy, at six month follow up, the level of loneliness in the people that had the social identity based approach would be lower than those that just experienced cognitive behavior therapy. Um, so huh. when, I, when I was reading some of that research, I was like, this is, this is interesting. This is really cool stuff. And that's something that motivated me to research into that area more just because I see so much potential. I, I know you're not a clinical person or that at all, but I just wanted to ask because it was very interesting. What would a social identity approach look like compared to a cognitive therapy approach? <laughs> would you have any idea? I know. You don't need to go into detail, of course. But. Yeah, well, it, it, it's really group. It's group based, and uh, that's basically the essence of it. Um, is that it's more group based, and it's about um, attachment to a identity and the norms that form around that identity. Um, so the not the typical behaviors and, and beliefs and values, uh, and enhancing those within the group. Um, and that connection that arises from that um, is is therapeutically relevant. So if you're looking at some of the research that we will be doing, um, I have a, a PhD student at the moment, Courtney Matthews, and she is um, looking at something that looks very similar to these groups for health interventions, which is Dungeons and Dragons, where you get a group of people that come together um, talking about the same thing and sharing norms and values and beliefs um, and and manifesting that sense of social connection that can be quite therapeutic and help bolster and maintain a high sense of mental well-being um so that's some of the research that i'm quite interested in looking at um that we have starting up uh pretty much next month is when we actually start collection uh, uh, that, that must be some fun stuff study as well that, wow. that must be some fun yeah. experiments to run <laughs> yeah, yeah no it's 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 very resource intensive but we're, we're really looking forward to really looking forward to gathering that data and uh, have you got like a it. set of adventures you're gonna uh use as your uh the defined environment for well it, funny you say that is because um sorry i'm swinging around on my chair um but um it's because i i, I fuck up up on maori and um one of the i've i've been really fortunate in, in later life that i've been exposed to a lot of people that have really strong cultural knowledge. Um, some people from from the northern iwi, such as uh, Rudy Wai Fox, who you had on here, and yeah. Finn. Um, yeah, he's been on here as well. Yep. And um, but then also I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of people in my own iwi Naitahu down here um, and learn from them. But that's not an opportunity that a lot of people um, are, are afforded. So one of the things that had been on my mind is how can we group the, these social identity approaches with this undercurrent of cultural reconnection in a way that's not really confrontational, um, that has that's has a sort of low barrier to entry, right? Um, because some of some of this idea, um, like if you talk like really wise, um, uh, we'll talk about cultural embeddedness, and he talks about how um, your ethnicity um, brings you to the uh, door of the marae, but it's your embeddedness that. Um, that happens when you walk through. Sometimes that can be quite um, difficult for people to take that step through. Um, they don't feel that they have the knowledge that they need, um, which is um, not that you don't need that knowledge. Um, but of course, there's this expectation or the stigma on individuals that they need to have a certain level of Maori knowledge to engage within, um, within their community or with their iwi. So how can we use Dungeons and Dragons and have a campaign that's based around Puraka or Māori mythology that can help teach around cultural values and beliefs and practices um, in a way that's fun, engaging, um, and that's uh, approachable. So, so yeah, um, as to which campaigns we're doing, we're hoping that we'll be able to move, start with some basic uh, modules uh, just to try and understand the basics of how it's all working from a psychological perspective and within a social identity um, framework. And then we're hoping to move towards uh, inc including that cultural component as well of cultural reconnection and have uh, Purako based um, interventions uh, or, or so, campaigns, sorry. So I've got a two-part question. 
uh, how do you choose the participants for the experiment and can you participate in them virtually? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so definitely um, we will be actually advertising for participants just in the first study. All we want to do is confirm our suspicion that those who practice um, uh, or participate in Dungeons and Dragons see that grouping or that identity as a part of their own identity and that they draw on those experiences in their everyday lives. We just want to say, okay, is that is are we on the right track here? Um, study two is going to be the longitudinal part. Um, and that's where we're going to say, uh, let's take people who have never played Dungeons and Dragons and follow them over time and watch the manifestation of that identity. Um, so yeah, that could be where we could we we could do a bit of a ring around for those that are keen. Um, Oh, so, that sounds exciting. Uh, the, the hardest part is just getting DMs and making sure that we compensate everyone. Um, oh, I I know the perfect. Uh, 